So what is CIQ? Um, every day we engage in something ordinary and very, very extraordinary. Uh, we have conversations. And in 2016, I got a um, certification in neuroscience to like I could take a look at what happens in the brain when we have a conversation, what happens neurologically, what happens in um, the hormonal activation that happens when we exchange every day. So when we engage in conversation or when we develop conversational intelligence, CIQ, we actually have chemical and biological interaction that is hardwired. We're hardwired to connect and we use words to do that and it turns on and off genes. We use up to 16,000 words a day, whether we're on a bike, whether we're in the garden, whether we're at a farmer's market. And truth be told, nine out of 10 conversations fail to make a mark. Uh, we fail to listen to connect. We listen to um, argue, to make our point, to have our ego uh, in play. We need to learn how to listen to connect in order to have that nine to 10 fail turned around. Also, we ought to think about how we double click, like the mouse that we used to use. Um, ask questions for which you have no answers and prime for trust. So I have a story to share that really illuminates CIQ or conversational intelligence. It was on a plane not long ago and Five minutes airborne, it started to shake very, very violently. Belly of the plane was impacted by birds that had flown into the left engine, and the engine caught fire. The pilot was perfect. The air crew was perfect. They communicated in a measured, calm, methodical, informative way, and they allowed us to do something that in CIQ was called the ladder of conclusions. When we have an event like that, what's happening is cortisol comes from our primitive brain and we're ready to fight or, or flee or to react. The pilot helped in how we interpreted the danger and how we made assumptions. So what happens in the brain and what do we need to think about when that kind of process takes hold? We have five brains, so I'm gonna concentrate on two only. The two that I'm going to concentrate are our prefrontal cortex, where oxytocin is created, and primitive brain, where cortisol is created. We have, in the primitive brain, 0 0.07 seconds to come up with our reaction of fight or flight, what we're going to do next. And we have some control over that. That's the good news. The other brains that we don't have time for today, but to be aware of, is a brain that deals with relationships. How do we fit in the world? A brain that deals with the understanding around our reality and how to make sense out of it, and then a brain that actually is a sensitivity brain. So the prefrontal cortex, it's where oxytocin and trust can be created. Really important. What do you do? How do you get that kind of experience underway when you only have a couple of minutes to have a meaningful conversation? When you think about the power of the prefrontal cortex, what you want to do is you want to upregulate. Anybody who's a good teacher, a good leader, they're inclusive, they're informative, they appreciate, they co-create, they validate, and that brings up oxytocin and that creates connection. You want to downregulate what comes from the primitive brain or where the amygdala is. All of us have probably heard of an amygdala hijack. That's when you're criticized, like cortisol is created, when you are excluded, when you have some kind of withholding and limitation placed on you. George Bernard Shaw said the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it's taken place the illusion that it's taken place. So when you go out to have a meaningful conversation, keep in mind, listen to connect, not refute, connect. Ask questions for which you don't have answers. Double click, prime for trust.
open with priming for trust. And keep in mind the picture of the brain where you've got trust and oxytocin, distrust and cortisol, and mitigate by leading with oxytocin and trust. Thank you.